back to back to the Leinster. Um, Ryan, like Galway have been in ten Leinster finals since joining Leinster in two thousand and nine. They've won three of them. They've lost six and drawn one. Like um, they have, like added hugely to Leinster. It'd be complete wasteland if they weren't there. Yeah, look, I, I certainly think they have uh, contributed a lot because when you when you look at it, right, Kilkenny were in their pomp uh, when they're at the, the top. Uh, like what Wexford bet them in 04. Um, we'll say take all way out of it. Wexford won in 04, Dublin won in 13, and the rest of the times it was it was Kilkenny winning. So I certainly think without Galway putting up that challenge, it would be a little bit, uh, do you know, not exciting. Um, and all the attention would be on, on Munster, which would be rightfully so if that was the case. So they, they have uh, they have contributed to it. Uh, if you look at bogey teams for Galway, it seems to be Dublin seems to be the bogey team. Um, for a, a lot of the, a lot of the time there anyway. Um, but look, I I suppose what what have they added to uh, Leinster? They, they've they've added a lot. Is that return three out of ten? Uh, is that a good return for a, a good hurling team, a team that have won all Ireland in in the process? You, if you ask any, anyone from Galway, they, they'll probably tell you they, they would have liked more. They would like to be winning more in Leinster, especially when you see it's not like Munster where any of the five teams um, could win any game. Any team, any team could beat another team in Munster. In Leinster, it's not the case. Uh, no disrespect to, to anyone, but like you're, you're looking at the, t- the top three every year is going to be made up of Galway and and uh, Kilkenny and then either Dublin or Wexford. And like I said, no disrespect to any of the others, but that's the way, if you're a betting man, that's the way it, it's looking. So there's a lot more scope there to, to be able to try players um, against certain teams and, uh, and and peak at the right time. Mm. Kieran, do you think... Um... How do you feel about Galway after what you've seen so far this season? And Kilkenny without Adrian Mullen and then Mikey Butler and um, Mossy Keown, they've been injury doubts as well. Where do you think both of these teams are at? Hard to know, Shane. And, and I suppose when I say what I mean by that is, you know, we saw Galway in the second half against Dublin. They kind of just came to the party. Uh, we thought Kilkenny were kind of going well. And the next thing, Wexford pulled put them out under the road and get a, get a win there. So very inconsistent, to be fair. And uh, extremely hard to call to call who comes out of Leinster. Uh, Galway, Galway to me, Galway to me are, are a team that probably, you know, not fulfilling their p- potential. Uh, even, you know, Henry's going to be under a bit of, bit of pressure this year. There's no point saying he's not. And, you know, I think if, watching Galway last year, I think it was at, at the tail end of the championship that Galway kind of came. And I said to myself, if Henry had got that twist at the start of the year, Galway would take some beating. So, and, I, and I'm yet to see that yet, Shane. So, mm. Leinster at the moment, very inconsistent, hard to call it. As I said earlier on, I was extremely impressed with O'Donoghue's Dublin team the first half against Galway. I thought it was an, aw- an awesome display. And if they kept that going, that bit of consistency, they could also throw themselves in the mental pot as dark horses. But present moment in Leinster, hard to call it, and hard to call it because of the inconsistency of the other teams. Mm. Do you feel like uh, season two for Henry Shefflin that there's a bit of pressure now to deliver a bit of silverware? And it's 2018 since they last won the Leinster title. Yeah, without a doubt, there's, there's serious pressure on Henry this year. And come here, to be fair, no different, no different than an inter-county player. When you're an inter-county player, you know, some people thrive in that. Myself, personally, I love that pressure. And, you know, that comes hands in hands with the manager. So that won't rattle him or, or anything like that. So definitely the squeeze is on him this year to kind of to produce. I, I, I'd be saying more so, produce performances first. Because silverware, then usually looks after itself. So if he can get a few good, solid performances out of Galway, Galway then could throw themselves in the real melting pot for serious contenders for the all Ireland. Yeah, like one of the things that, that people talk about is Conor Cooney. It's not really happening for him or Conor Whelan at the moment. They were both taken off at Nolan Park in that drawn game. And both of them were scoreless against Dublin the last day out. And you couldn't say either had a massive impact. Yeah, like it's a little bit unusual that the two, both of them are finding it so difficult at the moment. Yeah, a bit unusual, but I have to say that, as I said a while ago, Shane, the Dublin played exceptional. 
you know, their centre back was outstanding, their full back was outstanding. You know, they have a few right queer hawks there. You know, so mm. as I said, you know, they're you know, they're coming at the right time. You know, Conor Whelan and Cooney, they're always going to be marked men. And I suppose mentally, it's how you deal with that. You have to be ready for that every day you go out. You know, any day you go out and championship across the line, you know, there's someone there to babysit you. His job is to babysit you for the full game. And you have to be ready, ready, ready for that. And if you're not ready for that, then, you know, you'll probably, nine times out of ten, you'll probably underperform a small bit. Mm. Um, do people in Galway, um, Ryan, feel that they're proper All-Ireland contender this year? Uh, no, they don't. Uh, there's a lot of... Now, look, I'm only going by the, the vibe around, but a lot of people are saying, Joe, you know, there's a few players that are missing. We're not at the, the Limerick uh, standard yet. Um, so there's... There, I won't say there's negativity around Galway, but there's not a lot of optimism around Galway. Um, now, I'm sure with some people there is. And they'll probably chastise me for, for saying that. But the, the general vibe is that there's more hope and optimism rather than, than uh, just sheer positivity about it. Mm. 